together on this Sunday morning, so please forgive me. This vlog is about credit and money, and before I say anything, I want to make sure that I give my disclaimer that I am not a finance guru, I'm not a CPA, I'm not anybody that works in banking, I am a single mom who has struggled um, severely over the years, and I kind of found my way in the dark, and I want to give some pointers and some tidbits to help you not have to struggle with your money. So, here we go. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is credit, and before I even do that, I want to make sure that I mention that um, if you have not gotten your credit report in a while, uh, you are entitled to a free credit report each year, and you can go to, I'll drop the link below, but there's a website that you can go to, and you can get all three um, credit reports. I recommend that you review those credit reports with a fine tooth comb identify any inaccuracies, any addresses that are wrong, any phone numbers that are wrong for you, dispute those off of there, get them removed because a lot of times uh, information will become blended even among family members and um, if creditors pick up on that, they may uh, attach a, a, an account to you that is not appropriate or not, does not belong to you. So I strongly recommend that you do that. I also recommend that outside of the big three that you send away for your credit report from um, Lexis, ne Lexis Nexus and Inovis. I just got my credit report from Lexis Nexus. It looks like this. It is this thick. Crazy. But this is my report, and it's amazing how much information that one bureau will collect on you. Lexis, Lexis Nexus, I can't say that. Lexis Nexus is the uh, credit reporting agency that provides your clue reports, um, your auto insurance um, score, your property insurance score. It contains any and all public records or public uh, judgments that you have filed at the court. So if you've ever been sued, if you've ever filed for bankruptcy, um, if you have anything that has been registered at the court, LexisNexis is the entity that will connect, that will collect that. And they are the ones that will furnish that to your creditors and to your credit reporting agency. So you want to make sure that anything that's contained in those reports is accurate. Um, they also do identity verification. And y'all, I ran into a huge issue um, a few years ago, and it still occurs that if you've ever had to um, log in somewhere or you have a request out or even sometimes applying for credit and they have a checklist of stuff like, you know, name the street that you lived on or what have you. And you're like, I ain't never lived on none of these streets. Where is this stuff coming from? And then you check no and it's wrong. <laughs> It's in Lexus Nexus. You need to get that out of there because that's where they're generating these identity um, verification questions from. So get that. And then Inovis is one that a lot of people don't know, and I'll leave the link be, um, below. And I can't even really tell you who's using Inovis. It's kind of the young kid on the block, but um, it's still, I think, it's necessary for you to gather that information. So I wanted to get that out the way. Um, anyway, moving back to your credit score, everybody talks about your credit score, and generally it ranges from about 300 to about 850, somewhere around in there. And if you're in the 8s or even the 7s, you are considered golden. If you're in the 3s, 4s, and 5s, girl, bleep, 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 nope, you're not getting nothing. You may as well just take your little sad credit score and go on somewhere. Now, here's the thing. I've been on both ends of the spectrum, so I know how it feels to be like, yay, you know, I got this, or mm -mm, nope. <laughs> What you doing? So I want to tell you this. Number one, if your credit score is not where you like it to be, don't be dismayed and don't be disheartened because it will take a fair amount of work, but you definitely can raise your credit score. And the first way of doing that is to get your credit reports like I mentioned to you before. Review those things with a fine tooth comb. Number one, anything that is inaccurate, get it off of there, disputed with the credit bureaus. Number two, anything that is over seven years old, get that off of there, dispute that. Make sure that you, you know, report it as obsolete. They no longer are able to report those accounts on your credit report. So I'm going to stop it. Number three, if you've had anything that has come to your house by way of collections, do not ignore that. C collection accounts factor heavily on your credit report. It does not look good for you when things go to collections. So your best bet is to, number one, dispute it with the collection agencies. You have about 30 days to do that from the time that they send you the first notice. Educate yourself on the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act that is at the federal level, but then at the same time, find out what your state laws are. Sometimes the state offers far more protections than the feds do, and you need to be able to know what those laws are. Cite whatever that law is in your letter, child, I've done it. 
and demand that they they provide to you the information that you're entitled to, whether it's you know the amount owed, how did you arrive at that amount, who the original creditor is, um, who when the account was open, who even opened the account, and make sure that it's yours. If you decide that the account is yours, then you negotiate with the credit collection agency and you do a pay for delete, and that simply means that you know listen. If I pay this, I need you to get this off your, my credit report. The Art of Negotiation is a wonderful tool that you can use, and it is always in your arsenal. You are now always at the mercy of a collection agency or even a credit agency. You need to know what your rights are. Um, the next thing is if you don't have a savings account, you need to establish a savings account. Um, I opened up a separate savings account. I bank with a credit union. I'm not fond of big banks. If you are, God bless you. But I do bank with a credit union. Um, and then I opened up another account with a bank, even though I'm not fond of them. Um, but, but I opened it up simply because they offer free checking, free savings, and then at the same time, there's a tool within their savings that just asks you, you know, how much do you want to save, or like, what are you saving for? So if I said I wanted to go to Belize, and I put in, and I do want to go to Belize, but if, if I put in, you know, I need $4,000 to go to Belize, and I need this by... 2018 or whatever it is it'll tell you exactly how much you need to deposit bi-weekly monthly etc in order to get to that amount by that day i think that that is a fantastic tool if you have that at your disposal wherever it is that you bank i strongly encourage that you utilize that and then just set up a direct deposit and transfer it you can say for medical expenses that way for um um uh, emergencies that way um, but you need to have a goal of savings and have a cushion that way you don't have to rely on your credit cards when it comes time for an emergency and that's something that I learned painfully over the years and I've had to dip into my savings and had to reestablish myself and that's not you know that's not any indictment on anyone things happen but you want to be able to have the money to do so you don't always want to start a GoFundMe because something happened that's just not a way to live the next thing is um, I started collecting my spare change and I heard I saw this on a commercial years ago I can't even remember what commercial it was but it was kind of like you know the guy was depositing spare change um, into um, a little cup or something like that I was like that's a good idea and so once the mason jar gets filled I have little coin wrappers I wrap them up I take them to the bank and I deposit it in my savings account it's not a whole lot but it's more than what I had and so I don't despise the small things I'm all about you know little um, deposits and little changes in habit will definitely increase. But back to the credit score. So there are two models. Two models that um, figure prominently into your, your credit score and they can look different. There's your FICO score, which has a six month history look back in terms of establishing the score. And then there's the Vantage uh, 3.0, I think it is, and that has a one month look. So um, the biggest difference between the two is that FICO no longer takes into consideration your past medical uh, bill history. So if you have medical bills that have gone into collections, a lot of people are very upset about that. If you have ca catastrophic illness or something that's taking um, a huge amount of money they may not have for medical expenses um, they didn't want that factored in there and you know I think FICO listened to that and they stopped figuring that into the algorithm so that's no longer an issue the models are still very similar in terms of score Vantage score does kind of a weighted model so they both take into consideration your uh, utilization and available credit so your debt to credit ratio they don't want to see you maxed out on your cars that's another good reason why you should have a savings account so that you go to your savings first before you have to use your credit uh, cards <clears throat> number two what you don't want to do is start having a flurry of applications because number one that causes hard credit inquiries and after so many it looks terrible to creditors because it makes it you look like you're desperate so don't do that. Don't just apply for a whole bunch of credit cards for no reason at all um, because hard inquiries will stay on your credit report up to two years before they fall off. So you want to make sure that you are not wasting a hard credit inquiry. Then if you really want to apply for credit, there are several um, uh, 
uh, search engines, I think, that do what's called a credit pools database, and it can kind of tell you in your area what a certain creditor would pull, where, where they would pull from, what so what credit report they'll get. So let's say TransUnion, and then what kind of score you need in order to even qualify for that card, so you aren't wasting your time. I think that that is a great resource. And finally, I want to point you guys in the direction of you know the internet. You don't have to be a money guru. Just learn from other people. I belong, like I said in the previous vlog, to several groups online, several on Facebook, several boards that I go to, and I just glean information. I, I definitely gorge myself on information because somebody somewhere has been through what I've, I'm going through currently or what I'm trying to go through. Right now, I'm, I'm establishing businesses, and I don't necessarily want it tied to my personal credit history, so I want to see how I can kind of avoid that, and I've listened to people who have gone into business and what that means and protecting yourself and you know all those kinds of things and it's been invaluable in terms of, of understanding and awareness and I, I can't pay for that kind of advice so please attach yourself to you know Facebook groups other social media groups you know there are groups on Instagram there are groups on Facebook there are groups on YouTube or, or vlogs on YouTube just like this one that are probably better than mine that will give you some insight in you know places that you can go in order to increase your knowledge and your awareness about how to use credit, how to leverage credit, what to do with your credit, and how to keep your credit. And so, you know, I wanted to make sure that you guys get plugged into that. But overall, listen, if your credit score is 310 today, that does not mean that it can't be 800 in you know a year or two it just really depends on how aggressively you attack it what kind of plan you get together and how diligent you are about making sure that your credit and your finances are compatible so don't be dismayed and don't be you know in the the pits you know just know that your credit score definitely will influence and be a flat factor into how much you ultimately pay for whatever it is that you want the choice is yours but I hope that you found this vlog useful. I'm going to leave some links below for you guys to kind of, you know, at least get started. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please leave the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch y'all later on.